Good morning and welcome to Coastlands Online Church Service. It's good to be uh, together this morning and you're very, very welcome if you're joining us uh, for the first time. Um, so I, I just feel it's really right uh, to start the service this morning um, praying for Ukraine. So I wanted to read to you from Psalm 91. When you abide under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold to shelter me, the only God for me and my great confidence. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy and he'll protect you from false accusation and any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield, keeping you from harm. So Lord, we pray for you to comfort Ukraine in their hurting. Protect them through this storm and through the power of your Holy Spirit. We pray for you to inject hope back into their hearts. Where you are present, Lord, there is always hope, however bleak the circumstances. May your peace overwhelm Ukraine in the midst of the chaos. Okay, so we know that God is a God above all else. And let's worship him this morning as he deserves our praise. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. All oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free? Always oh, free.
Nathan for those who don't know me um, today I'm going to speak about faith and hope in him Jesus uh, the last time I spoke I actually spoke about faith um, which wasn't originally going to be the case I was going to be speaking about hope and faith up until the Saturday before I, I was going to speak and 
God give me a clear message to delete that message on the Saturday and, and, and write about my faith in him, about a word that he'd given me. Um, so needless to say, uh, God's got a great sense of humour because I did delete it and I've had to rewrite it all and uh, it's changed dramatically since then. So obviously this is the right time for this message. So yeah, and God's really taken me um, through a season of, of, of hopelessness. Uh, hopeless in situations in myself in my own ability and my own strengths to uh you know try and fix people or, or, or work out situations and been feeling like i've been spinning multiple plates and it's really been exhausting time i felt like anxious or, or, over where other people are at and, and the suffering they're going through and really running around in my job and, and, and trying to serve and but ultimately, it, it was it, it sometimes that, that was taking me away from intimacy with him, uh, being with him. And, um, and in some of these moments, it felt like I was on a hamster wheel, just running with no purpose. And God is again showing me to be still and just to know that he is God and to rest in him. Because all my faith is in him and, and the work and the miracles he does in people and then when I know that when I understand that when I'm not working in my own ability I'm able to bring hope and a light into a situation where someone else is feeling hopelessness because me as a Christian I'm not supposed to feel hopelessness I know I have hope hope in my salvation that I'm going my, that the price has been paid that I'm going to meet uh, my heavenly father and, and and be judged and go to heaven and spend eternity with him and keep keeping the faith that every chain can be broken and bring jesus into every situation and god has been giving me revelation lately around hope that actually the world sells hope when people invest in, in, in a business or an idea into an organization the hook is the hope that if this works out, the hope is you'll be financially secure and your life will flourish. Everything else will come into a line with, with, because now you've got the finances. Now you've got the, self, the sustainability and the, the, the self-reliance. You don't have to rely on anyone else. It's just all down to you. Hope. Hope that when you book a holiday, you'll be like the families on the adverts or in the magazines where you're all perfectly jumping into a pool. Or oh, you know the sun, the sunsets coming down, and you're staring lovely into uh, you know your 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 husband's or wife's eyes. And I've had lovely experiences on holiday, and and, and really God filled moments. But often the case, especially when you get kids, you know they 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 you know you put their best you know clothes on, and they got ice cream and sauce all over them, and you know they're really hyperactive and excited, and you can't really relax because they want to have fun and. But it's, it, it's still amazing, but it's not like the advert. And I remember one time when we were on a holiday and my younger son, Dylan, he actually jumped in a pool fully clothed after a nice evening meal out. The only trouble is he couldn't swim. And like a good loving father, I watched him struggle and he did make it to the edge, you'll be glad to hear, and pulled himself out. <laughs> but we, we have these um, expectations, this hope that this holiday is going to be something amazing and it's going to be like heaven and it's certainly not, even though they can be lovely. And people then put their hope in alcohol and taking a sip of alcohol, taking a, a drink of alcohol will take away the anxiety and you can drown your sorrows. And by taking drugs, you can escape all your problems, all your realities. But all of a sudden, as you're drinking, going further away from God, you end up drowning in your sorrows and then being wrapped up in addiction or even rec recreational use. Uh, you, 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 you get into a habit that you can't escape because if you could escape, you would. And you can be gambling. That's another hope that you can win. It's a hope for a better future with it, this win, but it's all deceit. It's all there to snare us and entangle us into sin. Because if you could escape, you would. And there is no freedom in drugs or alcohol or, or gambling. Um, 
the uh, and and being financially stable, even though that's important, you know, that's a that's a godly thing. Uh, God wants that for us, not to have too many worries about finances all the time. But the only freedom, the only true freedom is in Christ. And I have found that outside Christ, there's a lot of hopelessness. Well, there is hopelessness. You get words of, of wisdom like it will be a better day tomorrow. Hope with no foundation, just empty words. They're sort of dead before they even leave the mouth. They're coming out of a place of sincerity. You know, these people, you know, love, love you and care about you. But ultimately, these words just wither and die. It's when we put our faith and our hope in the perfecter of faith. When we pray. When we believe like childlike faith that we can overcome addictions. People's mental health can be cured. And the love and joy and thanksgiving like no other can come rushing into our lives. That is our hope. And that is our faith that we cling on to. Not because now you see him. He's always seen you. But now you see him. And a verse in the, in the Bible has come to me over and over again the last couple of weeks. And it is this. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. That he may lift you up in due time. And cast all your anxieties and cares on him. Be alert and sober minded. Your enemy the devil prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing steadfast in faith, because you know that the same uh, you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace who called you into eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. There is an enemy out there who wants you to be self-reliant, wants you to find solutions for your own anxieties. For you to lose hope in him. To lose hope in Jesus. I've been working with this guy. Um, you know, he's been through some real issues. Um, he's come off heroin. He's been wrapped up in addiction. And, you know, he, he's starting to turn his life around. He, you know, he's not a Christian yet. But he, he's really, uh, you know, starting to uh, try and open his eyes to things. And he told me this story the other day, which really just blew my mind away god started to really speak to me through it and he's lived in this property for four years and he told me that he'd never been outside his back garden gate and his back garden gate in his mind used to go on to a, a, a mountain this huge massive mountain that he thought i'm too unfit and i never want to walk up anyway but he's been getting close to his next door neighbor lately and his next door neighbour's got a dog and said, meet me around the back. We'll go for a walk with the dog. And because this person's such a good friend, he didn't want to disappoint him and thought, actually, let, I'll just go for the walk and, and, and see how it goes. Well, as this person opened up his back gate to, to his, you know, to, to his amazement, to his surprise, there was just a green pasture. And there was a river flowing through it. And oh man, God really spoke to me when he started speaking this. I started getting goose pimples and just thinking, wow, this is amazing. I was full in a room actually at the time when he was speaking with, with non-Christians. And I was like, oh, that is so good. <laughs> that is so good. And um, God started to speak to me and saying, listen, if you have faith in me, I can remove that mountain like I did for Scott. I can totally remove that mountain. Because I want you to lie down in pastures green. And like that river that's flowing through. I want to lead you beside the still waters. And I want to restore your soul. Oh man. What a good God. And as God was speaking to me about this. 
I just realised that the things that had been weighing me down, making me feel like there was no hope, this mountain in my life, that if I put my faith in him, that he would just remove it. And he'd start filling me up with his Holy Spirit and start restoring my soul, leading me beside the still waters. Oh, what a good God. What a fantastic God. So I've really been encouraged by that this week. And, you know, the next bit of the verse is, uh, is about being sober-minded and about uh, the enemy. We have an enemy, the devil, who prowls like a lion looking for someone to devour. And the most sober-minded thought that's come across my mind since I've become a Christian is when not when I fought, but when I had revelation that I could do nothing for God, that I had to put all my trust, my hope and my faith in him. And as much as you might be able to say that, to live that and to have true revelation of that is sobering because it goes against everything you've ever been taught. Everything that you can do this, that if you set your mind to it, you can achieve it. But in God's kingdom, it doesn't work like that. And it's utterly sober, you know, it just sobers your mind to actually make you feel, think clearly about how much we must rely on him. And we must resist the devil. During this period of hopelessness, I had to grip onto my faith, speaking back to the devil, giving him Bible verses, and telling him, actually, I'm, you know, you're right, I am falling short. But he paid the price for that. God paid the price for that. And all the other things he was putting into my mind that I wasn't working hard enough and I wasn't doing enough, that actually God told me to be still and rest in him. And he's starting to restore me back. I can feel it. I've had a little bit of suffering, but he's starting to restore me back. And he's making me strong and firm and steadfast in my faith. Building me up and building up my hope. So to him be the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. So what do we put our hope and faith in? When my hope and faith is in the free gift of my salvation, that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed me clean, that one day I will sit at the judgment seat of Christ, of God, and be seen as righteous without blemish, be given the verdict of not guilty and be able to spend eternity with him. Because Jesus died on the cross for me and you. And my faith is in him. Faith even when I can feel him. Faith even when I can hear him. Faith even when I'm suffering. Faith because I have seen the miracles he has worked in me. And I've seen the miracles he's done in other people's lives. He transforms lives. He makes the impossible possible. Faith because he loved me first and now I can love oh I can love now faith turn into obedience wanting to know him more just spending time with him being intimate with him being still and knowing he is God and my favorite time of the week believe it or not is doing a Sunday newspaper round with my son. We split the papers and we come together at the end. And God gives me more revelation of things that are going in my life, things that are happening um, in, in my life, revelation of his word, revelation of his promises, revelation of who I am in him. No more, there, there, there's no greater time for me than this. It's because I'm being still and resting in him. Just delivering these papers and just thinking of him. Meditating on his word, praying, praying for other people. And God just speaks through this silence so prominently. So if you're like me and you can get wrapped up in busyness, I implore you just to be able to spend that time with him. Just spend your time in him and set your heart, revere your heart on Christ as our Lord. Always prepare to give to an answer to anyone 
who asks you to give a reason for your hope and can be able to do this with gentleness and respect. So when people see us, when we're renewed in our spirit, people can see we have this hope, we have this energy, we have this love. We have all these characteristics of this character of Jesus, of all the promises that he's laid upon our lives. We're starting to live them. Oh, he is so good. And when people ask us about where do we have our hope, we can do this like commanded with gentleness and respect. For they know there's something different in us, through us, and that is God and all the glory be to him. And it says in his word, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. We'll run this race and have perseverance and not grow weary. What a promise. And they will walk and not be faith uh, and not be faint. We can walk this life of faith and not be faint. And may the God of hope fill you with all the joy and peace as you trust in him. So that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I feel like God's really calling us to do this. Is to really rest in him. And he is a God of hope. And he will fill you with joy and peace that set you apart from other people. And your faith, you can then start. People will start asking you, you don't even have to share your faith. People start asking you, what, 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 why is life so different for you? How come you, 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 you don't get angry in this situation anymore or as much anymore? How come you're full of hope? How come everything you do is different from society? And we can point to him because he gives us the joy and peace even in our worst situations. And we start to overflow with the Holy Spirit. And that's when things just happen so amazingly in our lives and other peoples around us. And if you're without hope or just clinging on to your faith, put your trust in him and he promises to renew you. Overflowing you with his Holy Spirit because our God is good. He wants to restore you. Not to restore you back to where you were before, but to his will, for what he created you for. Your purpose, identity and self-worth in him. That is our hope. That is our hope in our salvation. That's where it all lies in our salvation. The price has been fully paid. And we have a new purpose and identity and our self-worth is in him and in how he sees us and how he works through us. That the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit who is in Christ, dwells within us and works within us. And we can start doing his will. And then maybe even after a little suffering, he wants to revive you. Oh, he wants to revive you. He wants to awaken you. He wants to awaken me. He wants to awaken God's people to the true nature and purpose he created us for our true natures and pur uh, purpose in christ to be imitators of christ so let's go through this life holding on to our hope and faith resting in him being imitators of christ and handing over all our worries and anxieties in christ to christ sorry because we love him, because he loved us first. And God wants us to fill the world with his hope, with his hope to spread it to the hopelessness of this world. The things that are going on in this world, you only gotta watch the news for a couple of minutes and it's filled with anxiety and hopelessness. But we can bring hope to the world through our actions, through the way we speak, because he dwells in us. So bring our hope and faith into every situation. And not our feelings. And understand he is going to renew you. And he is going to fill you. And overflow you with his Holy Spirit. Because he loves you. Because you are precious to him. And because he sent his only son to die on a cross for you. So have a blessed week. Remain steadfast in your faith. And put our hope 
in Jesus Christ. God bless.
Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, we hope you've had a good service today um, and we really pray that you have a good and blessed week. And um, if we can do anything for you or if you need prayer, please do get in touch. And for those of you who are able to join us um, on Saturday for Phil's induction, um, it's at four o'clock at Coastons and we would love to see you there. Take care and God bless.